Hi, welcome to Ready Math. This is going to be Lesson 3, Session 3, and it will be covering pages 43 through 46 in your Ready Math workbook. So if you have your Ready Math workbook out and ready to go, please turn to page 43. Now today we're going to be learning how to break, break apart figures to find the volume. So we're going to have um, rectangular prisms that are irregular, that have um, really, that have two rectangular prisms put together, and we're going to figure out how to find the volume of the whole um, figure by breaking the uh, figure apart into two rectangular prisms. So with that, let's go to page 43. So on page 43, um, here is the problem that we are going to try and do on our own before I teach you anything of how to do it. <laughs> so here's the problem. Bethany has raised a raised garden bed. The diagram, uh, the diagram shows its measurements. All the corners are right angles. If she fills the bed to the top with soil, how many cubic feet of soil will Bethany need? So, remember, we ask ourselves three questions every time we look at a word problem. The first question we ask ourselves is, what is the problem about? So, this problem is about Bethany and her raised garden bed. And she wants to put some soil in it. Okay? So, she wants to know how much soil fills this entire garden bed. So to um, so it, what are we trying to find out? Remember, we're looking for the question mark, and it says here, how many cubic feet of soil will Bethany need? So we're trying to find out how many cubic feet of soil will Bethany need? So we know that we have a problem that is about Bethany and filling her garden bed with soil, and we want to know how much soil goes in the whole thing, and then we need to figure out what is the important information. So I would say in this case, the important information, first of all, is we're talking about the word, we're talking about cubic feet. So cubic feet tells us that we're going to find the volume because nowhere in this problem do we find the word volume. But when we see cubic feet, we know that cubic feet tells us that we are talking about finding the volume. Then we need to look at this figure here. I added two sides here that you um, that you will probably need to solve your problem. And so now we have um, all of this is important information. Okay? There are lengths on every side. I would like you right now, and I already kind of gave you a hint saying that you would need to break apart the figure into two rectangular prisms. So I want you to see, without going ahead, if you can figure out the volume of this figure. So go ahead and pause the video. Take your time. You've got as much time as you need. Um, solve it to what you think is the answer. And then when you're done, come back. Okay. I hope that you took the time to pause the video and to go ahead and try and figure it out for yourself. There's something that makes you feel so great about trying it on your, on your own. Even if you don't get it right, your brain, honestly, if you fail, your brain is making growth. That's when you get something wrong. That's when your brain has the opportunity to grow and to learn something new. So I love to celebrate my failure when I don't do something well. Now let's go ahead and turn to page 44. I'm going to go ahead on page 44 and we're going to go through how um, to do the problem that was on page 43. And then we'll see if you came up with the same result as um, we do right now. And then you can uh, either figure out where you um, might have made a mistake or you can feel really good because you got the problem right. So um, I did fill out um, these two sides for us so that we had that information to go off of. Make sure I did it right. Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. Awesome. So Bethany has a raised garden bed. The diagram shows its measurements. All the corners are right angles. If she fills the bed to the top with soil, how many cubic feet of soil will Bethany need? So... I'm going to kind of look at these two at the same time so that you can see what we're doing. As you can see, 
This figure could be broken apart in two different ways. So one way you could break the figure apart is to go straight across here and then have you'll, you would have the red figure, which would be, um, in this case, the red figure would be like figure one. And then the blue figure would be figure two. Down below, the red figure um, would continue to be figure one. And the other side, the blue figure would be figure two. I like to number my figures so that I don't get confused um, when I'm trying to figure out what it is that I'm solving for. So then after I have my, um, we've decided in this case, we decided we were going to break apart the figure here. So now we, what we have to do is find the volume of the top figure and then find the volume of the bottom figure. So uh, in the model, it says one rectangular prism measures six feet by four feet by two feet. That is the blue figure. The other rectangular prism measures 12 feet by six feet by two feet which is the red figure. Then when, they, when we break it apart in a different direction, now the red figure measures 10 feet by six feet by two feet, and the blue figure measures six feet by six feet by two feet. Um, now it's uh, important to note that we don't use anything at, at the top. So we know that this top is 12 feet long. But since we're breaking that side apart, we're not going to use that information because we're breaking this actually in half. And so we're not going to use the 12, that 12 number there. On this one, this side here would be 10 feet. But since we're breaking that 10 foot section into two sections, we're also not going to use that figure there. Now let's go ahead and let's look at the connected side and hopefully that will make more sense. And then I'm also going to show you another example so that you can see how this is done. All right. So look at the first model it. How can you find the volume of each rectangular prism? So we're looking at this figure here. Okay. So, we need to multiply the, the length, the width, and the height of each figure. And then on the blue figure, we also need to measure the length, which is six. Oh, there we go. The width, which is four, and the height, which is two. How can you find the volume of the entire garden bed? Once we figure out the volume of figure one and the volume of figure two, what do you think we do with those two volumes? That's right. We need to add the volumes of each rectangular prism together. We need to add the volume of figure one plus the volume of figure two together to get the volume of this entire figure. So now let's give it a whirl. So what is the volume of the entire garden bed? So we are looking at the first model it. So we're not looking, I'm going to cross it out. There we go. So we are not looking at this bottom figure. We're just looking at this top figure. So shape one has a length of 12 feet. So I'm going to, I like to circle the numbers that we're using so that we know that we have, um, a length, we know that we have a width, and we know that we have a height. Now I jump the gun. There's one thing that I like to do when I am looking at the volume of irregular figures. It gets really hard to make sure that you have a length, a width, and a height. So what I like to do is I like to highlight all of my lengths the same color, all of my widths the same color, and all of my heights the same color. So if we know the volume equals length times width times height, then I'm going to highlight all the lengths yellow, all the widths orange, and all the heights pink. So 
this um once you do this you will have every single edge colored in a color so we have a length a length a length length and length there's no more going side to side so i don't need yellow anymore my widths go kind of front to back so width 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 and then all of my heights go up and down now once i have those highlighted you can look and see that right here we have a yellow we have an orange and we have a pink for this red figure we still have this number over here but can we use this six foot piece it goes from here to here no right now we can't use that six foot piece the reason that we can't use that six foot piece right right now is because when we're talking about the length of this shape if we used six feet that would only go from here to here and it would not give us the length of the rest of this piece um, of the rest of this um, red shape so that's why we need to use the 12 for the length the 6 for the width and the 2 for the height so when we do our math over here we're going to go 12 times 6 and that is uh, 72 and then 72 times 2 is 144 now I happen to know my multiples of 12 but if you don't remember you can look on your avid binder and um, they have all the multiples of 12 there for shape 2 we've already highlighted our sides so now this is the blue shape so I'm going to use the blue pen so what is the length of the blue shape that's right it is six feet what is the width of the blue shape we're looking for the orange now can we use this shape here this length here I mean, excuse me this width here no because this goes all the way to the back and it has part of the red shape we have to find a width that goes from here to here so that would be oh right there four feet and then finally what is the height the height in this particular shape is the easiest to pick out it's the pink and that would be two feet so we are going to use the length the width and the height six times four times two so six times four is 24 24 times two is 48 I lied oh nope I'm right 48 now we're going to add to find the total volume we need to add the volume of the red shape plus the volume of the blue shape so we have 48 for the volume of the blue shape and 144 for the volume of the red shape when we add the two of those together we get a total of I'll add it up here 144 plus 48 4 plus 8 is 12 4 plus 4 is 8 plus 1 is 9 1 plus nothing is 1 192 and don't forget your units it's going to be cubic what is it feet that's right feet so the total volume of this entire shape is 192 cubic feet did you get it right don't worry if you didn't this is probably the hardest thing we've done so far in math in fifth grade so I'm just proud of you for hanging in there and don't worry you're going to get it I promise now I've shown you questions one through three showed you how to solve um, the vault find the volume breaking apart the figure going across here but do you think that the volume will be the same if we break the shape here and find the volume of shape one and the volume of shape two or do you think that they're going to have different volumes let's find out so now we're going to look at the second model it so now we're looking down below down here okay show how you use the expression here's our expression that we have 
to find the volume of the garden bed if you break it apart this way. When you evaluate an expression, do the operations in the parentheses first. So I have this um, written out right now. And so first of all, we need to find the length, the width, and the height of the red figure. So get out your highlighters. We're going to highlight all of the lengths yellow. All of the widths orange. And you can highlight whatever color you want. You do not have to use my same colors. That's just the three colors that I grabbed today. And then your heights. I'm going to color all of my heights pink, but they could be any color. It just really, really, really helps to highlight those sides. So that's why I love using highlighters when we're talking about volume, especially when we're breaking apart irregular um, rectangular prisms. So let's look at shape one. What is the uh, the length of shape one? You're looking for a yellow line that that goes across the whole shape. That's right. You need six feet. So we're going to write six over here. Then what is the width of shape one? Can we use this for? Nope, we can't use it because it doesn't go all the way to the back of the shape. But we can use this 10 over here. So we're going to write 10. And then finally, what is the height? Remember, that's the easiest. That's our two. Then let's look at shape two. Now shape two, what is the width, excuse me, the length of shape two? Six feet. What is the width of shape two? Six feet. So let's put those in over here. And then again, the height stays the same. It is two. One thing that's kind of cool about this, these um, rectangular prisms is that the height always stays the same, even though the shapes change. That's kind of cool. So now, remember it says when you evaluate an expression, you need to do the operations in the parentheses first. So we're going to do this part first. So six times two times six times ten times two. So six times ten is sixty. 60 times 2 is 120. And then we're going to add that to 6 times 6 is 36. 36 times 2 is 72. Now we're going to add 120 and 72. And we're going to get <clears throat> 192 cubic feet. So as you can see, we solved um, we broke apart these two rectangular prisms in two different directions, but we still got the same volume, total volume, both times. We didn't get the same volume for each of the shapes, but overall, the total volume, when we added the two volumes together, we did get the same volume, total volume. So... Knowing that, do you need to break apart a solid figure in a certain way to find its volume? Use these two pictures to explain your reasoning. So go ahead and pause it and write down what you think. All right. No, you don't have to break apart a rect uh, the rectangular prism in any certain way. As long as the figures, um, you break apart the figures into non-overlapping parts. Um, the volume of each part added together will always equal the total volume. As long as you um, break apart the figures and don't use um, overlapping parts. Now, right now, I'd like you to reflect. Look back at your try it. So I want you to go back all the way back to what you did on page 43. And I want you to look and see what you got, um, what you, um, how you did, okay? And I want you um, to, to tell me which model or strategies do you like best for breaking apart the solid figures to find volume? So to find the volume of an irregular rectangular prism 
my favorite strategy is, and then I want you to tell me what is your favorite strategy and why. All right. Um, if you haven't finished, go ahead and pause the video and finish writing your sentence out on number six. And now we're going to go on to page 46. On page 46, we're going to practice a couple more times breaking apart rectangular prisms. On number seven, we actually don't need to draw the picture because the information has been given to us in the question. So let's ask ourselves those three questions that we always ask ourselves. The first question is, what is the problem about? So let's read the whole problem. The recreation center has an L-shaped pool. One part of the pool is eight meters by six meters. The other part is 12 meters by six meters. The whole pool is four meters deep. What is the volume of the entire pool? Show your work. So what is this problem about? It is about the recreation center and its L-shaped pool. Then we need to go, okay, what are we trying to find out? Well, we look for the question mark because that always gives us a really good hint as what we're trying to find out. So in this case, we're trying to find out what is the volume of the entire pool. So what is the volume of the entire pool? And then finally, we need the important information. So we know that one part of the pool is 8 meters by 6 meters. The other part of the pool is 12 meters by 6 meters. And then the whole pool is four meters deep. So I went ahead and wrote out two expressions for us to solve. And here's how I got these expressions. First of all, the, it said one part of the pool is eight meters by six meters. That's where I got my eight and my six. But then I didn't know how, I knew my length and width, but I didn't know what my height was. But then um, the, uh, the third part of the um, important information said that the whole pool is four meters deep. So I knew that my third um, value that I needed to write or third factor was four. Then for my second rectangular prism, I know that the other part is 12 meters by six meters. So I put my 12 and my six here. And then again, the whole pool is four meters deep. So I used my four again. So I didn't have to draw the picture to be able to solve the problem this time. So what I'm going to do first is solve this expression. So I'm going to say, what is 8 times 6? Well, 8 times 6 is 48. And then what is 48 times 4? So I don't know what 48 times 4 is off the top of my head. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply that out. 8, uh, eight times 4 is 32. 4 times 4 is 16, plus 3 is 19. So my first vol um, volume is 192. Then I'm going to go to my next side. What is 12 times 6 times 4? Well, we did 12 times 6 on the last problem, so I know that 12 times 6 is 72. And then what is 72 times 4? So 4 times 2 is 8, 4 times 7 is 28, so it is 288. So then finally, I need to add figure 1 to the volume of figure 1 to the volume of figure 2. So 192 plus 288 equals 0, uh, 8. 480 cubic, because we're talking about volume. Cubic, what was it? Cubic, oh, it's not focused. Cubic meters. You are doing such a great job hanging in there. This is a beefy math lesson.
All right, I'm going to help you do number eight, and then I'm going to have you do number nine on your own, and then see how you do. So on number eight, the first thing I would suggest doing is deciding which direction you're going to break apart this figure. So are you going to break apart the figure going across or up and down? That's going to be up to you. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to break it apart right here. I feel like it's a little bit easier to deal with this being figure one and this being figure two. So what I'm going to do is find the volume of figure one, which is the length, the width, and the height, and then the volume of figure two, and then I'm going to add them together to find the total volume. So next, I'm going to highlight my length, my width, and my height. So length. Um, length, 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 length. I always like to talk when I'm doing it. Width, 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 width. And then finally, height, 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 height. All right. So in figure one, I'm going to use red. We need to figure out what is the length, the width, and the height of figure one. So we're looking at figure one. This length is really teeny. And you notice right here, I don't see a value right here next to this length. To this length, Is there another length that's the same size that is on this figure? Yes, it's back here. It's a little tricky. They might be trying to throw you off. So the length is 10 centimeters. Then we're going to go, what is the width? What is the width of this figure here? 30 centimeters. If you're wondering where I got that 30 centimeters from, if you follow this width, this width, this width, and then keep going all the way down here, this 30 centimeters, this length here is the same as this length up here. And then finally, what is the height? It is 10 centimeters. So this would be um, 10 times 30 times 10. And that's going to give us the volume of figure one. Then we need to go down to figure two. What is the length of figure two? 30 centimeters. What is the width? That's right. It's also 30 centimeters. And then what is the height? The height is, is it 30? No, it can't be 30. We can't use that number because this takes us all the way to the top. But remember, we broke it apart here, and that stops that shape at that line. And this 30 goes from this corner all the way up to this corner. So we have to use this height over here. So our length is 30, our width is 30, and then our height is 20. So let's go ahead and solve for both of our volumes. 10 times 30 is 300. 300 times 10 is 3,000. 30 times 30 is 900. 900 times 20 is 1,800 or 18,000, excuse me, because 9 times 2 is 18 plus 3 zeros. And then to find the volume, we're going to add 1,800 plus 3,000, or 18,000, excuse me. And we're going to add those together to get 21,000 cubic. And then it is centimeters. That's right. All right. I'd like for you to pause the video right now. And you're going to go down and you're going to do number nine by yourself. Really quickly, I want to show you what your steps are going to be. And I'm going to leave this up here. And so that you can pause your video so that you can see all the steps. Let me hide all this so you can see down below. All right. So here are all of the steps for, I 
it's so hard to get all of it all the way up. Here we go. The volume of irregular prisms. So the first thing you're going to do, so you're going to be doing number nine by yourself. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to read the problem. Then you're going to highlight your sides. Then you're going to make the irregular shape into two rectangular prisms. So you're going to break it apart, either going side to side or up and down. You get to pick. Then you're going to figure out what sides you need. So remember, you circle your length, your width, and your height for each rectangular prism. Then you're going to number the rectangular prisms. So I numbered this shape one or prism one and prism two. Then you're going to find the volume of each prism and then add the volumes together to find the total volumes of the shape. I'm going to leave this up here for you. Um, go ahead and pause your video so that you can follow the steps with your, rect your um, rectangular prism over here on number nine. So pause the video and then go ahead and complete number nine on your own. Okay, I'm not going to do number nine, but I will tell you the answer for number nine. So you could have broken it apart going, let me pull this back down. <laughs> you could have broken it apart going side to side or up and down. The total volume for this um, uh, figure for number nine is 72 cubic feet. If you broke it apart going um, side to side, sorry, I'm looking at this. Um, well, if the total volume of this figure is 72 cubic feet. We're going to be practicing this um, beyond today. So, um, I didn't want, I don't want to overwhelm you. This lesson has already been very long. So you're going to go ahead and do independent practice. And hopefully you'll get lots of practice um, finding the volume of irregular shapes.